So while on a company trip out here with some of our business partners and friends, we got noticed that an assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump was just done. I can't tell how pissed off I am. I did an IG Live the other day. I can't tell you how much of this, not just not an attack on Donald Trump, this is an attack on America. The land I love, I know the land that many of you love. I wanna stand for this type of shit. Listen, I've fought for this country. I served eight years in the Marines and I took an oath to defend all enemies, foreign and domestic. What the last thing I would ever think about defending our country from is domestic enemies. We have to know, you and I have to know, we are far past kinetic wars, meaning that army against army, ships against ships, planes against planes, the wage of war that you and I face today is economic war, it is viral biological war, and it is a social war that we face today. So my initial reaction to this, I can't believe there was not just an attack on Donald J. Trump. It's an attack on America. Although we haven't gotten all the information, internet out here is fairly spotty. But all the details, listen, you can say what you want to say, stage, unstage, inside job, inside. listen, bottom line, this is an attack on the land I love, that many of you love, that many of you call home. Now, based on some of the information I was able to gather here, I saw that right away, President Biden denounced this violence. Right away, former President Obama denounced this violence. Interesting though, I went on Twitter, went on X, and you know what I didn't find a few hours later from the White House? Zero response from the White House. This is bullshit. The White House needs to be leading. Yes, Biden leads, but listen, the White House needs to say their piece. And silence, silence is also a response. And right now, this is what America needs. They don't need silence. You know what they need? They need a leader. Elon Musk even wanted to say right away after it happened, he wanted to say, I fully support Trump. Regardless of what you feel, where does your initial feelings about what happened in America? And some of you guys say, well, I don't care about this type of stuff. This is the reason why I hate politics. The reason why I felt the same way previous to me, saying this type of stuff in, in the media, saying this stuff online, saying this stuff in front of my team, and our office, our company, is I thought the same way too as well. I said, no matter what goes on uh, in politics, it doesn't affect me. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to bring it up. But guess what politics and politicians do? They create bad policies would create bad ideologies that long-term and short-term affect us. We don't like none of this stuff. Listen, I'm just here in Bora Bora and we met a couple here, just got married. He's from Colombia and she's uh, uh, born in Kazakhstan, Armenian by ethnic upbringing. Just got married, they're spending the time here in Bora Bora and they're disgusted with what is going on in America. He served in the Navy for eight years. He's disgusted, by the way, young couple in her 20s, disgusted with what's going in America today. Are you disgusted? Are you pissed off? Are you one of those, well, you know, I couldn't be sorry about being sorry because, you know, the guy's an asshole. Listen, earlier this year, our mentor, Patrick David, flew us out to New York. We had a company trip. We had a special mentoring session there. And in spite of what we thought about meeting this man, we bumped into President Bill Clinton. I served under Bill Clinton. I shook his hand. Why? Because I respected the presidency. I respected America. Even though I may not have affected by his policies or liked his policies, but I still respected what? The presidency. I respected the country. There was a commander in chief. And even though I may not have liked his policies, what he did to Monica Lewinsky, what he did to a lot of the people, and sadly the ripple effect of Epstein, you talk about it, but guess what? I still respected. I respected the fact that he was a president of the United States. Here's what I learned in the military. I may not like that person, but I have to respect the position that they hold, to improve that position that they hold. That's what's important to me about America. You see, the thing about America today is this. We've gotten so damn selfish. We've gotten so narcissistic. It's about me, you know, this whole do me, do me, do me. You know what I realize as an entrepreneur? You know what I realize leading people? It isn't about me. It's about my selfish desires. It's about how I can serve the greater good. How can I serve my people? How can I serve our company? Or in this case, how can I serve my country? And here's the crazy part. Last assassination attempt was March of 1981, and then President Ronald Reagan. And the beforehand was the assassination of Kennedy, the complete assassination of Kennedy. Why? Because these guys had ideas that went opposite of the grain. And guess what? They were leaders. They were leaders that stood up to fight for people that didn't know how to voice and fight for themselves. So what type of person are you? The problem I think in America today is this. Let's just make everybody happy. Let's just make everybody feel better. Let's make everybody collectively feel good. 
But that's not how you lead. That's not how you build a country. That's not how you lead an organization, a movement, a place of prosperity, wealth, and happiness. Listen, even in the Bible says there's always going to be rich and the poor. Why? Not because of lack of abundance, but how people think. So how are you thinking about what's going on right now with the Trump assassination attempt? Here's the crazy part. Let me cut to a clip here of this prophet. This was done three months ago. This is going to give chills all over your body. But this prophet had a dream that something was going to happen to Trump. This was done, again, three months ago. Check out what he has to say about this. Basically, when I was praying a couple weeks ago, he said to me, he said, Brandon, I want you to watch Passover. For when Passover comes, there's going to be an acceleration of things even more so from what it was from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. He said, but this will be a time of great acceleration. And he said, you'll see acceleration in the, in the financial realm. And he said, you're going to see uh, acceleration in the politics and you're going to see acceleration in war. Because the Lord told me, he said, I am not done with America. Amen. He said, there's going to be a new wave of patriotism coming out. And that's whenever I saw Trump and I saw, the, I saw a, a red wave coming out of um, Michigan. And then I saw Oklahoma and there was embers of people and they were all on um, these, these, they had torches all throughout Oklahoma and they were raising up these torches that looked like fire and they were bringing forth a new patriotism upon the nation and it was coming, it was being birthed and it just kept spreading like fire all throughout America, all throughout. And I saw Trump rising up and then I saw an attempt on his life. Uh, that w the, this bullet flew by his ear and it came so close to his head that it busted his drum eardrum. And I saw um, he was he fell to his knees during this time frame and he started worshiping the Lord. He got radically born again during this time frame. I'm talking people say he's saved now, but he becomes really on fire for Jesus for what I saw coming. And um, then I saw people interceding when he, and I see him, I saw him winning the, the presidency uh, through great, uh, the Lord showed me it would go clear into the, the summer. Great persecution would come on him through the judges and through the, um, through the law and all these people trying to sue him and all this stuff. But there would be a stop to it. And their things would start to, to, to break free, come toward the fall. And then I saw him winning uh, the election. Say, how would you feel about that? This is a time where God's attempting to show his face. Are you listening? Are you watching? Are you able to receive? God wants to talk to you right now. The big man upstairs wants to say, hey, listen, I'm speaking if you're listening. Are you listening? As I talked about what my come to Jesus moment happened in my life in 30 years old. I woke up drunk six o'clock in the morning thinking I was at home in bed. You know what I was? I was driving on the opposite side of the road, driving. That was my come to Jesus moment. Maybe God's knocking on your door right now to have a come to Jesus moment. God wants, he wants to have a conversation with you somehow, some way. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to knock on your door and say, listen, I want to help you build and have a happier and better life. Are you listening, my son and daughter? Are you listening? Are you willing to open a door if you hear the knock? Are you willing to let me in? See, that's what's going on right now because guess what God needs? God needs leaders. And some of you are saying, oh, Matt, you know, <laughs> you don't want me as a leader. I'm this person, I'm this person. I'm brank, I'm, I'm drunk, I'm high, I'm corrupt. Yeah? Well, so many of the other leaders in the Bible too as well. And God still used them. You ain't got to be qualified to step up as leader to be used by God. What do you got to be? Willing to be used by God. He will qualify you. You don't got to be qualified for him. But let me not digress. Let me share with you some thoughts I have here about what's going on. The country I love just got attacked. Not the president, not the former president, the country I love. The ideology, this experiment of America just got attacked. And listen, here's what I say about leadership. No leader ever is 100% loved. Nobody ever you'll vote for is going to be aligned with you in everything that you feel strongly about. And I'll say this. I don't vote for the person. I don't look at the person. I look for his ideas, leadership. Can he get things done? Even though I may not like the style of which he gets it done, but the bottom line, he gets it done. I can rock with that. And hopefully maybe you can too as well. Earlier this year, I watched that movie named Civil War. I saw it when it first came out. I had 20 talking points. I'll, I'll post some of this right here. And I didn't want to post it public because I just kept it for myself because when I watched that movie Civil War, think about this right now as it pertains to what just happened. You know, we are, you and I were half an inch away from a civil war. You didn't think you and I were half an inch away from so I'm talking about the half an inch from the bullet going through Trump's ear into going into his brain, or sadly, through his ear and sadly killed a man protecting his family. And some of y'all say it's staged. Well, hey, does somebody want to set up a stage to 
sacrifice his own life just to play off the stage and be an actor in a staging process? I don't know, I don't think so. So America, this cannot be an okay thing. This cannot be a thing that you and I just say, oh, okay, every rally, every political event, now we're gonna expect shootings. And think about what's going on with Trump. They went to character assassination, attempt him. And character assassination attempt his friends around him, his network, that failed. They went to assassinate his finances, that failed. They went to assassinate his political career by suing him, putting him in court, that failed. And now, the only thing that's potentially gonna work is you have to physically kill the guy? Is that the way you and I want our America to be known for? That makes us a third world country. Is that the land and the country, the home that you and I want to live in? A third world country where the rule of law is being bullied? People have the biggest guns? Is that the world that you want to live in? I don't think so. The land of the home, the free and the brave to live a life of pursuing happiness without having to avoid being shot and killed for your ideal of what freedom is. So you and I are walking to very, very turbulent times. But this is a moment for you. Number one is to stay focused and clear and keep an eye on your current mission. And if you don't have a current mission, you better find one. Guess what? There's opportunities in turbulation. There's opportunities in turbulent times. There's opportunities in chaos. I've always found opportunities in chaos. You know why? Because in times of chaos, guess what people are looking for? Leaders. You don't have to serve in the military to be a leader. You have to serve a, in, in, in policy, policy makers, a politician to be a leader. You have to be a pastor to be a leader. Today, you can decide to become a leader. And guess what happens when you decide to become a leader? You stand up for the things that you believe in and confidence to know that people are going to rally to that cause too as well and also be willing to accept when people that don't believe in that or feel that you're crossing a line that they leave you too as well. Well, that means being a leader. And I pray and hope that your leadership is based on the right morals, values, and principles. So bottom line, you need to get involved. Have clear, have clarity, have focus, have intention, and you gotta get it involved. Well, Matt, you know, I never wanted to get involved in politics. You know, I felt that same way too until I figured out that these policymakers end up creating laws and policies that affect your lives. Good and lately been more bad. Plato said once, and here's his quote, one of the penalties of refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. Do you wanna be governed by your inferiors? How do you feel about inferior boss at your job? Inferior family members that make decisions for your family and it's inferior to what you think is a better good for the family or for your company, let alone your community. So you gotta stand up and somehow find ways to get involved in politics. I didn't say you gotta run for office. You gotta make sure it's part of your process of being a citizen in America, that you do your job. A lot of guys moved from Dallas and California the last two, three years, different blue states, shall we say. You know, I asked him when he moved to Texas, did you register to vote? Did you get your driver's license? Is everything squared away for November? What's the point of you guys moving over here to be an entrepreneur and take care of yourself and make money on yourself, but you don't, you don't benefit the city, the state, the country if you don't vote? That's an easy way to get involved. Are you registered to vote? Is a very basic fundamental. Number two, the media is going to focus on creating this chaos. You just need to stay objective you need to take a position of you're gathering information, but don't jump to a conclusion. Just remember this, the media's job is to fill this statement. What bleeds, leads. They're not here to inform you of things that helps you. They're gonna inform you of things that get you to watch their network. So don't get sucked in. If you do get sucked in to gather this information, gather for what it's worth, but also have this discerning look at things and say, you know what, what's bullshit here? What is really the truth? And process it, and from both sides of the media, both. Right side, the left side, so therefore you can formulate your own opinion. Number three, create a plan and decide what your next moves are. You know what some of our friends are talking about while we're here in Bora Bora? Do we have enough weapons at the house? Yeah, sad reality. Do I have enough food at the house? Do I have a generator at the house? Can I defend my home? Do I have medicine at the house? What about from an economic standpoint? If the world shuts down, how do I make money? What type of resources are most important when things are completely shut down? For example, what was the most important to you when pandemic hit? You know, I figured out what was very resourceful for me during the pandemic, delivery drivers, toilet paper, food. Forget the money, being able to provide and protect and have food for my family, medicine, quality care for our family. Those were the most important things. It wasn't necessarily money. Money in a fallen state, money is just not money. It's a piece of paper. But what can I have in terms of goods and services and valuables that I could use to trade with other people if the you know what hits the fan. 
Okay, so say, let's say that never happens. What about you as a business owner? What happens if your industry gets affected? What happens if your economy, your personal economy, your, your salary, your job, you get cut? What happens if that gets affected? What's your plan B, plan C, plan C, even though you're focused on, on plan A? What is your plan in case this country falls apart? So therefore, you go through this crisis, but you go through this crisis having a contingency, and you have clarity, and best part, you've got confidence. Number four, usually in most of crisis, there's an absence of faith. So do your part to reject fear. And in times of crisis, you can either fall into your faith or you can fall into your fear. Guess what most people do? They fall into their fears. Why? Because it's easier to do. Panic mode is easier to do. Confidence mode, strength mode, resilience mode, that's what leaders do. So do your part to reject fear in moments like this. Show leadership to your family, have a conversation with your children, have a reset a conversation with your spouse, have a conversation with your parents. That's the moment right now where you need to lead in the home. And my last point is this, pray like it's up to God, but work like it's up to you. When you find your situation of lack of clarity, fear has an opportunity to come in, but the moment faith comes in, guess what happens to fear? Guess what happens to the darkness? Guess what happens to the dark thoughts? Immediately they go away. So what can inject that faith into your life? Having your faith in God, knowing that God, trusting God, your prayer life is intact. And some of you guys say, oh, man, that's corny. I dare you right now. Open up your mouth and start praying to God. Lord God, help me through this process. Make me more clear as your son, as your daughter. What do I need to see? What wisdom do I need to see in this moment? How do I lead my family? What resources do I need? Give that a shot. Think about what happens when you allow yourself to be vulnerable to the big man upstairs. And guess what the big man upstairs wants to do? He said, like, oh, my son, daughter, I just wanted to bless you. And I was waiting for you to ask. Isn't it the way some of you are with your own children? What more do you think your father in heaven wants to do to you? To bless you when you ask. When your children ask you for something, don't you want to provide them? Where do you think we got that from? That's the God wiring, the spiritual wiring that's in all of us. And just know this too as well. President Bukele was interviewed by Tucker Carlson a couple months ago. And he said, what was your turnaround for El Salvador? Because President Bukele is a very young president leading El Salvador. What was your three-point economic plan solution to leading the turnaround of El Salvador? Because point number one was the most important point to President Bukele. And guess what point number one was? Win the spiritual battle. What? Win the spiritual battle? Wait, we're talking about a battle here between flesh and blood. We're talking about a battle here about my brothers and sisters. We're talking about a battle here between this gang and this gang. You're talking about a battle of a spiritual battle? That's right. President Bekele believed in winning the spiritual battle. Because once you win the spiritual, that vertical battle, then you got God's covering. Because you win the vertical battle, guess what you win? You win the horizontal, earthly battle. Let me read you what it says here in Ephesians 6. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Don't you believe what's going on right now in America, what's going on in the world is evil? The pushing and the forcing, the making sure that everybody conforms to a certain way, you don't think that's evil, taking away from your freedoms? And here's what scripture also says, if you buy into that, guess what you need to do, which is the next step, which is putting on the full armor of God. What? Let's read again here in Ephesians chapter six. It says, therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of the evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, it says here, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with the feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith, which you can use to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit of all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. And always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So when you're putting on the full armor of God, you have to know this too as well. This is our defensive armor. There's also offensive weapons. The offensive weapons is what? The spoken word, the word of God. And your sword is what? Using the Holy Spirit to advance God's work. So that being said, what are your thoughts here? What happened to this assassination attempt on President Trump? Now, how do you think it affects your life? I want to know. Put it in the comment section below. Do you feel the way I feel? You may feel opposite the way I feel. I want to know, put it in the comment section below. We want to learn from you. We need to have this conversation, discussion, so therefore we can hear all voices, so therefore you can win. Figure out what your policies are when going through crisis. In the process, bottom line, 
be a leader in a moment of crisis. That being said, make sure you subscribe and let us know your comments below. Till we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.